Welcome to this short tutorial where I'm going to show you guys how to create seamless textures. So what you want to do first is grab a texture image that you want to use for your texture. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just search grass texture and uh, Google Images. Make sure you pick one that has a fairly high resolution as you don't want something with a low resolution, it'll look pixelized. So this one looks big enough, 1600 by 1000. I'm going to go ahead and view this image and right click, save image as, and I'm going to go ahead and save it in my project folder. For this tutorial, I'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop. So I'm, I'm just going to call it textures. All right, it doesn't matter what you call it, we're going to save it as a Photoshop image later. Go into open up Photoshop, file open, navigate to where you saved that image. Here's my textures folder, and there's my texture. Go ahead and click open. All right, there's a few different ways we can go about this. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. I'm used to doing it. So right now we have a lock layer. I'm going to go ahead and right click, duplicate that layer, click OK, and delete the lock layer. That at least makes it so it's not locked. All right, next thing we want to do is make sure the image is a size that's a power of 2. So we're going to make it a 512 by a 512. All right, so I'm going to grab my crop tool right here. If you hover over it, it says crop tool. Make sure your scale is one to one. Doesn't matter whether it's pixels or inches. Make sure the resolution box is empty and just drag from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. Okay, you are allowed to move this if you want to. Uh, you can move it left and right. Uh, just make sure that it snaps back. So for example, if I move it down, I don't want to leave it there because now I'm cutting off the top part of the image. All right, so you can move it around until you get a good section that you want. As soon as you got that, either hit enter or right click and click cropped. It'll go ahead and create a square for you. So we've got a square, but now we got to make sure it's 512 by 512. So go up to the image, image size, make sure constrained proportions is checkbox there and put 512 into one of these boxes. It should change the other one automatically. Make sure it's 512 pixels and not inches. Click OK. All right, kind of decrease the size. In my case, Control 0 will bring it up and uh, maximize into the screen. If you do Control plus, it'll zoom in. Control minus will zoom out. All right, so now we'll start to fix the seams. It'll be on the left, right, top, and bottom. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. You can right click, duplicate, or I like the keyboard shortcut Control J. And I'm just going to duplicate my texture a couple times. All right, I'm going to select my top layer, go ahead and move it to the right. All right, if I drag it down, notice you have this little space right here. We don't want that. We want to keep it even with the top. So make sure you go into View in the menu bar and make sure Snap is checked. What that will allow you to do is when you move it, when you get close to one of the edges, it will go ahead and snap back into place. All right, I'm going to move my second layer here to the left. All right, notice that when I move this one to the left, my top one to the right, I still got that background image in the back. All right, I noticed uh, doing this a few times that if you leave that background image in the back, it instead of making this so blurred in the middle when you go ahead and do your, your seam right here, it actually does a little better job if you leave a background image. So that's why I did that. All right, make sure you have your top layer selected, and then go ahead and select the Spot Healing Brush Tool right there. So if we click that, now by having that background image when we draw this, it's not going to be so blurry. All right, make sure you click Sample All Layers because we want to choose all of these layers to choose from. Go ahead and adjust the size and the hardness of your brush. I'm going to keep it at about 5%. You can see the properties there. That's how I'll keep mine. All right, so now I'm just going to run my brush over the seam here. I'm just going to lightly do small strokes. And put that together. Okay, so you can't see the seam anymore. If you don't like the, the hardness that it's using, go ahead and turn that down. Ch try a bunch of different settings. If you make some mistakes and you need to go back, to, to go back multiple times, hold down Control, Alt, and then press Z. And that allows you to go all the way back. All right, once you have that seam down the way you want it, go ahead and merge all three of these layers together. So right-click, Merge Visible. That'll combine it all into one layer. 
Now that we have that single layer, we're basically going to repeat that process, but now we need to maneuver the up and the down to make sure that that meshes correctly. So same process, we're going to duplicate this a couple times. I'm going to move my top image up, move my second image down, make sure that they snap together. There's my seam. Make sure you have your top layer selected. And again, I'm going to use my healing tool and brush this together. All right, there it is. And you can mess with the settings to make this look a little bit better. I'm going to leave it as is. I know you can kind of still see a cross in there, but you get the idea. You can play around with it. All right, merge all these. And now, just to show you what this is going to look like, you guys don't need to do this. I'm going to do Control J, select this part. and change the width and the height to 50 percent i'm just going to show you what this tiled look is going to look like so if i push this up into the top left duplicate this layer a couple more times we now get that tiling effect right here so again you can kind of still see the cross but now you can't see where one picture starts and the other texture ends all right kind of cool all right, so now once you have that and it's all good to go, go ahead, File, Save As. Make sure it is a Photoshop file, the one all the way at the top. Unity does accept Photoshop files, so that's how we're going to do it. Make sure, again, you're in your project folder. Mine folder was called Textures, and give it a good name. So, Grass. Save. We're good to go. Okay, I want you guys to do this for at least three different textures, and then submit them through Google Classroom. I created the assignment on Google Classroom, so you can find it right here. Go ahead and submit those through Google Classroom, and we'll vote on who made the best one.